Welcome to the Hands On Business Podcast. Where else are you going to come to get tips, tricks, and advice on growing your business? Now, what people tend to love about this podcast is that it's a place where you can hear real business leaders discussing systems, methodologies, and strategies that they have actually used to help them catapult growth in their business. That's why Hamid, one of our listeners, commented that the podcast was inspired. He said, so much wisdom and clarity, brilliant topics that are incredibly well handled by some expert speakers. Hakeem is an eloquent and charming host who helps get to the heart of topics. I'll be back for more. The tough part is which episode to try next. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so I am your podcast host, Hakeem Adebi, and I've grown several small businesses to multi-million pound enterprises. And I noticed that there wasn't really any place that focused on where I was, i.e. growing a small business. All the content that was out there uh, seemed to be about big business and often just a lot of theory, not practical, implementable advice. And today we talk to Tim Redman, a man with 35 years experience in growing highly successful businesses. Tim is an author, a speaker and CEO of the Redman Growth Group. Today, we're going to talk about what successful entrepreneurs do that struggling entrepreneurs ignore. So Tim is going to talk about things like growth mindset and obviously much, much more. He's also going to delve into what a successful business growth plan needs to look like. As with a lot of my podcasts, you'll be happy to know there's a little gift. So make sure you listen to the end as Tim will get tell you how you can get $2,500 worth of his top level consultancy absolutely for free happy listening welcome tim great to have you on the show today as you know i like to make sure uh, that i always have people with wisdom on the show so you can always get the best advice so to that end tim has 35 years experience in growing highly successful businesses including work at pwc he's an author a speaker uh, throughout the world he's the ceo of the redmond growth group as well as running the non-profit redmond leadership Institute. So I'm not sure how he gets time to do all that, but we're going to get into that and find out shortly. Today, what we're going to be looking at and talking about uh, is what successful entrepreneurs do that struggling and entrepreneurs don't do or they ignore it. So welcome, Tim, and thanks yeah. for being to be on the show. Hakeem, this is awesome here. I, I've uh, We talked a little bit before the show, so I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but uh, the more you talk, the more I like you, man, the more I can get into <laughs> What you're doing and some of your business adventures crosses over with some of what I've done. So I'm excited about uh, talking with you here today. Well, excellent. So, so I, I, I never jump straight into the, the profit bit, which is I know what people everyone, what everyone wants to talk about and what the entrepreneurs do. First question is really to get to know our guests better. Uh, so I'm interested to know what the Redmond Lin Leadership Institute does because I'm sure there's an interesting story in there because obviously you're known yeah. about driving profit and growing business so this is a non-profit so just just give us a bit more information about that yeah now. okay so uh my my pathway was uh you know Pricewaterhouse Cooper CPA I joined a software program we uh was with another CPA we grew it up to about uh, 400 employees we sold it to Intuit quick and quick books guys and uh then I started a, a nonprofit where I traveled around the world and I was explaining to people and teaching people some of the lessons I had learned at PwC uh, and uh, also uh, in growing the software company. And then I and started coaching other businesses without really knowing what I was doing. I just shared my experience. And so... I started a uh, really a ministry or nonprofit. I went into churches, business groups, political groups, uh, all kinds of different leaders, tra training them in growth mindsets and tactical and practical ways of growing their organization, whether it's a church, a business, strengthening government. Um, and I went into some pretty... Uh, pretty challenging places here. So throughout <laughs> Central America, South America, Southeast Asia, and uh, been to England a bunch too. Love, love the Brits. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys get my humor a lot quicker than Americans. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. And, 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 and do you see a significant difference? Because you just named like some of these challenging areas. You were talking about the growth mindset, and then you're talking about Latin America, Central America, different places, which have obviously got their own challenges. 
So how do you cross that cultural divide, I suppose, would be the question. Well, when you're teaching principles, Hakeem, um, it, you know, the illustrations you use may be cultural and may not be as related, related. So I'll go in and preparing to go to a country, I'll read philosophers and the writers and uh, some of the leading uh, thought, uh, uh, thought creators. And I'll get my arm around what, what is their challenge. A lot of times I'll, I'll read from the uh, Secretary of State's office, what are the challenges in this country, you know, just from what our government looks at. And so I, I come in somewhat educated, but really I rely on the principles and, and, and relatively simple illustrations out of my own life where they can see the principle in action. They go, boom, I can apply that to my own life. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. So, so really understanding the, uh, the, the environment that you go into, understanding what's happening there, and then, and then really applying your specific principles to those particular markets. So let, let, me get, let, me give you a, let me give you an illustration. Like I was, I was teaching on different principles from this power to create, which I really, I really define, I redefine what, what creating wealth is all about. Creating wealth is not just gathering money and real, you know, real estate and all that. That's part of it, but that's, I think that's more of the result of wealth. The actual process of creating wealth is creating something of value and serving others. And so I talked about how uh, you know a, a guy that had been a janitor all his life and working in a school just said, well, listen, maybe I'll start out on my own and I'll go knocking on the doors of all these shops here and see if they need somebody to clean up their shop too that I can do. And he started a business. Well, I, I, I remember sharing this in a, uh, a large church of six or 8,000 people. And it was in a city just outside of uh, Rio de Janeiro in, in uh, Nova Iguaçu. And, uh, and I hear from the pastor that a number of people went out, bought a mop and a bucket and, a, and a, uh, a broom, and they started their own business. And some of these guys, you know, within a matter of a couple months, had 30 and 40 people working for them, just taking this simple idea, you know? So it's creating value. How do you create value, you know? And so we talked about practical ways of doing that. And they literally started businesses that became flourishing. So, so actually, it's, it's, it's about connecting with people and inspiring them with your message, really, isn't it? Because because yeah. that example you've just given there is, you know, you've given an example and people are thinking, and, and it's an interesting one because I've, I've seen lots of consultants, lots of people who speak. And what one of the reasons I went into this business was because I used to sit there and think, that sounds good, but I can't see how I can connect or do that in my own business. And I think what you've just explained is, is what leads to your, your success is because you're connecting so people can actually see how they can implement it directly as opposed to just an ethereal idea of oh well here's some general principles that don't really connect right right so so that, that's really I, really I really like that example of creating well so in terms of because you mentioned early on about growth mindset uh, and i've heard that a lot of my, and actually at my my daughter's school so i'm just interested how, so how would you define a growth mindset how do you see that manifesting itself just uh, an expert like yourself would be interesting to to get your thoughts on that well, you look at the world around you, either it's expanding or contracting. Uh, it's either uh, cooperating with you or working against you. Uh, there, you work with an expectation of opportunity or you work knowing that you're going to run into dead ends. And so it's a, it's a mindset that believes that you can affect your present and your future environment through consistent effort. And so you have a mindset of that. Now, some people say, well, no matter what I do, nothing's gonna change. And so what kind of effort are they gonna create, Hakeem, in the workplace? When they run into a problem and they go, this problem's bigger than me, there's nothing I can do about it. On the inside, they sit down and they fold their hands. And you know, I like, I like to say when, when we're coaching businesses, which is my, you know, that's our, our specialty now. We've got 150 businesses we're working with right now all over the United States. Um, I'll, you know, I, I have three words here that are hopefully going to be worth a lot to your, to your listeners here. And that is uh, casualness causes casualties. 
<laughs> so casualness causes casualties. And so we'll do what we call a casualness audit. You know, what are you doing in your business that you're doing in a casual way? Because you're convinced that no matter what you do, you're just going to try to get by to survive rather than thrive. So your energy, your focus, your, your uh, stick to your ability to get back up after being knocked down is at a whole different level with a growth mindset. You anticipate growth as a result of your efforts. Okay, I, I, yeah. So it's very interesting because I, I think I was speaking to Chuck, of course, uh, well, Stephen Gaffney, and I think he was talking about the same sort of thing. And he, I think he was describing it almost like going from a state of powerlessness to powerfulness. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's exactly what you're talking about in terms of, because uh, I just wrote it down there, you can affect the present and the future through consistent effort. And I think that that is one of the things, and you've seen, obviously, you've just described it in businesses where people just say, well, what can I do about it? And I, as I say yeah. to my children all the time, no, you can't affect the environment with which you're in, but you can affect the way in which you react to that, what the situation oh. that you find yourself in. Um, so, okay. So that, 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 that I, I like that. And you've got quite a few maxims. So, so that was one of my, my next questions, because I know you could manage to get your leadership maxims into John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Just for those of you who don't, don't know, I'm sure you all do, a world-renowned author and speaker, John Maxwell, yeah. we're talking about. Uh, so how did that come about then? Well, uh, I knew the guy, one of his writers, and I went to school with him, you know, and uh, I didn't think anything of it, but... I have another guy that's a dear, dear friend of mine that writes books. He wrote a number of great books. His name is John Mason. He wrote Enemy Called Average. Uh, he wrote another one called You're Born Original, Don't Die a Copy. He's just really quippy, quotey guy. And so he put a bunch of my quotes and he says, I need some quotes. And I've been writing Proverbs since uh, college days and uh, just little observations. And so I gave him my whole book of quotes. And uh, so John Matt, you know, he... Uh, this researcher grabbed one of these quotes he saw from John's book and he knew who I was. And so he had recommended that uh, Maxwell put it into to, uh, one of his chapters. I think it's on the law of priorities and boom, there it was, you know, so uh, um, I, nothing I did. Now I actually worked with John Maxwell and his uh, 1 million uh, man, uh, 1 million leaders mandate where we would go into it, uh, a certain town somewhere in the country, somewhere in the, in the world, I committed to go to Bogota, Colombia with another a pastor. And I was a businessman. We, we teamed up together for three years and we trained 600 pastors in uh, just the Mac, uh, Maxwell's leadership system. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we got to interact with that a little bit. He's a very gracious guy. He said he'd be willing to write a forward to a leadership book I'm working on. And uh, so I don't know what's going to happen on that. But uh, anyways, that's, so that's, that's how that happened. And it wasn't anything I planned or, you know, anything I positioned. It was just, oh, that's cool, you know. And I found the quote because uh, uh, somebody gave me that book. And so I'm reading it. I, actually, I was going on a mission trip. I was a, the um, project leader for a bunch of like six, 40 or 50 uh, sixth graders going down to Mexico from the Oklahoma and, and the United States. And I was reading that book in between uh, stops there. And uh, <laughs> I go, oh my God, there's my quote. <laughs> and so that's how I found it. So anyway. So, so just, just on that, because that's a real interesting thing. Because obviously you, you, you said you were... Uh, um training 600 pastors so is there any difference i mean because they're all people so is there any difference between training 600 pastors and training 600 business leaders or ceos what, what would it, what's the difference there? well um there's there's not a lot of difference um you know i think about ceos uh, what is a ceo it's a chief executive officer so they're the main executor yeah. They're the main, let's get stuff done, right? Yeah. So I can speak to CEOs very directly. And a lot of pastors have that same mindset. They're like the chief executive officer of their organization, which happens to be a church or, or nonprofit organization. 
And so I speak to them very similarly. Now, the illustrations I use uh, may be different to, so they can relate to in their environment. Uh, but it's, um, you know, I, I, I kind of like, I, I give it to them raw. There's very <laughs> few people that walk away asking me, uh, what do you mean by that? You know, <laughs> I want to make it super clear, you know, get off your blessed assurance and get after it, you know. Don't let uh, any dust settle on the top of your feet. Get moving, you know. And uh, so anyway, that's, so I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of similarities. They're humans and they're leaders of organizations. And so that's what I connect to. Okay, so, so moving on to some of, you know, the, the work that you do. I mean, you describe yourself as having an innovative coaching process that helps to grow your profit, grow your business right. and grow your life. So when you say innovative, you know, I suppose the question that people always ask is, well, so what's innovative about? Because there's lots of people who say, yeah, we grow businesses, we coach, you know. So what, what's innovative, innovative about your process? Well, we, we start out with what we call a growth plan where we identify uh, where the company is and the strengths that they have and the weaknesses. And, and then we take their three-year goal. We make that really clear. And then we'll build a business model around that. And a lot of times that three-year goal will actually increase when we give them that business model. And um, so you have to request it. That's kind of a, something that takes a bit of time, but we don't mind providing that to people. And uh, once they see a clear vision for that three-year goal, and a lot of times they may be a $300,000 or a $3 million business. And they, they think they want to grow to five, you know, to, you know, double it. But usually by the time we're done, we put a 10 X on it. We put a zero on it. And, uh, and then what we do for the rest of the growth plan is we give them the tactical and practical steps that we would recommend that they take to be able to reach that goal in three years. And then we say, Hey, do it on your own. You take this information. We, we provide it to you. Uh, we normally charge $2,500 for that fee, but for your people, we'll give it free. I mean, I'm not, not trying to advertise here now, but you know, if they, if they say we love Hakeem, we love hands-on business podcast, boom, we waive that $2,500. But anyway, so they can implement it, but our coaching program is different in that we're a do it for you coaching program. So we do it with you and do it for you. So we build a, a, a blueprint to get going on that track and takes us about three months and we we actually implement that blueprint into your business takes us about three months and then boom they they take off or they continue coaching with us even after that and we're getting okay. huge results i mean just literally 10x um we've taken people we had one guy that was uh he's i think 68 years old he's ready to retire um, he's got a good sized business, but it's not making any money. He's working 60 hours a week. And we brought him through our systems, our marketing, our sales system, our delivery system, our estimating system, all these systems here. He builds, uh, sheds in, in, uh, Arkansas, you know, so that's, <laughs> that's a state right next to ours. But, um, just within a, a about a year's time. We got them going from $100,000 a month to about $500,000 a month. And we got his profits from break even to anywhere from 15 to 20%. So now he's making 50, 75, $100,000 a month. Uh, I guess our, our dollars are really close to your pound, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, very unfortunate. For us Americans to travel over there. But, but anyway, so, you know, He's got all this profit, so he's taking care of his retirement. He's chasing his wife all around Florida. They bought a condominium down there. He's given to his church. He's helping to support um, programs in his town to help kids without dads. And he's he's just living his life. And he and he's he's working like maybe about a week a month. He takes off three weeks a month. So that's what we help people do really, really practically by implementing this and then keeping the pressure on them of making the right decisions and putting pressure on these systems that we've created for them, that they start working for them. And now they have a business that works for them instead of them working for it. 
Does that answer your question? No, it, it definitely knows the answer to my next question as well, actually, <laughs> that I was going to ask because it was, it was all about, because there's so many things, you know, when you're talking about creating a business, there's so many things, you know, lead generation, marketing, closure rates, cash flow, all that sort of good stuff. And I was going to ask you, where do you start? But you've actually explained that because basically what you're saying, you go through that system, that process and then the system. And I, and I, you know, any, anytime someone talks to me about systems, I get very excited because I'm obsessed with systems. Yes. But, uh, what I found, and, and it's exactly as you've articulated it, you go into lots of businesses and they don't have any real process or procedure. And even when they're successful, they're not sure how they're successful. And when you start <laughs> codifying stuff and saying, right, well, actually, if you do this every time in terms of a system, it tends to work. So why aren't you doing it? Oh, that's a good idea. And that's why when you were talking through there, it really rings my bell when people talk about we oh, have yeah. systems. Systems reduce your decision making. It uh, speeds the process. It speeds the training of new people getting on there. It improves the quality of delivery of product or service. It gets the monkey off the owner's back. Because I've got a lot of guys that they don't have systems and they're successful in terms of their bank account, but they're not successful in their time freedom. Yeah. They're owned. Uh, they, they, they think they own a business, but they're really the business owns them. And so that's no fun. So I remember working with this one guy and uh, he had a, uh, an elevator maintenance business. And uh, I remember speaking at a, a church and I was given biblical principles for growing your business. He goes, hey, this made a lot of sense. And I think I want you to be my coach, but I don't want to grow. I go, well, I don't know if I want to be your coach if you don't want to grow. Why don't, why don't you want to grow? He said, well, I'm $5 million and I'm making about $800,000 a, a year in profit. You know, I'm, I'm good. I just want to improve my systems. I go, well. Why don't you want to grow, you know? Well, because I don't want to, I don't want to work any more hours. I said, well, let's do this. Let's grow only if we can reduce your hours. As we grow, we're going to actually reduce your hours and not keep them the same. And so we had him going where he almost doubled his revenue. He increased his profit percentage from 16% to 24%, which is huge. He was making over $2 million profit. And uh, not even quite at $9 million, you know? And I said, well, how many hours a week are you working? He said, about 20. I said, well, how many hours do you have to work? He said, well, I work 20 hours a week because I feel guilty. But, you know, you know how many hours. I, I only have to work five hours a week to make everything grow just based on your system. So, boom, that's how it works, you know? And um, so a, a business, owner of business can be a place of great blessing. So here we've worked with over 1,500 businesses. So we've already solved problems that these people that own business before they've even run into them, we've already solved that hundreds of times, you know? Yeah. But why not get an expert that's already solved that problem to say, here's, a, here's the quickest, cheapest, best way to get the, from point A to point B to get your business working for you. And that's, that's what it, it gets me up early in the morning. You know, I love it, love it. Love it. Yeah, and that, and that comes across. And, and, and also, it, it never to be comes across to your client. Because I think when people come in, you know, because I've worked with, you know, and you will have, because you worked with PWCX, I've worked with lots of consultants. And, you've, and some of them, you look and you think, firstly, you don't really seem to enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> secondly, secondly, you don't necessarily, you've got some systems, but you're not wedded to them because they, they've just come to you from someone else and you're implementing what someone else has told you to do. And I've always found that the people that have actually lived it and done it and, and done it many times are much more helpful than the people who are just like, because you, you get lots of young people in Anderson Consulting, et cetera. I'm not picking them specifically. They're very young, straight out of university, and they're coming into businesses and telling businesses how to run the business. And you're like, right, so how is it that you've got the experience to <laughs> tell me how to run a business? So, so it is really useful and interesting to see people who've got experience and who love what they do. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. I'm doing it. Energy is everything. And uh, you're pleasant to be around when you've got decent energy. Um, you know, you're, uh, you attract people into your life that want, you know, successful people. Uh, you may repel some real negative people, but that's probably not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I hope we can 
affect them positively. I've, I've been negative before. I've had, <laughs> I've had my moments. And uh, so uh, I raised my kid. I've got four very above average kids now, and uh, they're all pretty much growing out of the house. But I used to say, well, who's the boss of your emotions? You know, I am, daddy, I am. Well, the, <laughs> the boss doesn't look like it showed up. The boss needs to show up at this job here. So, yeah. you know, you, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm the boss of my own emotions, you know. So anyways, you just have to own your own emotions, you know, your own, your own emotional state. And that determines so much in our lives. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, when you look at sports people, uh, they are they are the masters of it actually or the top performers are and i, and I take an example of wimbledon you got kyrios who isn't the boss of your own oh man. come on man i, lo I love <laughs> i Kyrgios. love that guy <laughs> I, I love him but he's not the master of his own emotions and then oh my gosh you got Djokovic, who's so in control of his emotions oh my gosh i you love look, that you look at the two of them and thinking actually kyrios is probably a better player certainly on grass more well, talented yes yes but who's the master of their emotional state hey, and that's the, and that's the point. Mm. that's what you always try to get people and it's just if you're talking about terms of that growth mindset because if you Djokovic knows at some point i can control this game whether i'm as talented or not i can control the game whereas curios goes into a position where actually he think, he hasn't got a growth mindset he's almost thinking oh well he's playing too well or i can't hit you know you can see you can almost see the meltdown in his mind where you think, you know, right, he's going to lose the game. And business is the same. As soon as you get into that position as a business person, surprise, surprise, things just start going wrong. You know, and then it goes, that goes wrong, then that goes wrong. It spirals out of control. And, they, and it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you see, I, I told you I couldn't control it. You're like, mm, no, you could have controlled it, but you've let it run away from you. But even when it's run away, you can still bring it back if you right. are... I really like that. That um, my, my poor kids, you see, every time I do these podcasts, I come off and I'm full of all these platitudes and these <laughs> things. And then, and like, you've done another podcast, haven't you, Daddy? I thought, oh, how do you get? Um, but but yeah, but but, but it, I find it fascinating because the, the mental state to me is, is is more often than not the difference between success and failure. Um, it's so critical. You cannot sit down and solve a problem. You yeah. have to go after it. Yes. You can't, you can't check out and be victimized and solve a problem that's going to last. I mean, you just, you just have to get up and if the best you can do is fall in the direction you want to head, that's just, just create some movement. That's what, that's what it's, just create movement because movement begets movement. And, uh, when in motion, things that tend to stay in motion, when you're still <laughs> You know, things are still, they tend to stay still. And so, you know, we want to arrest that thing that's been stifled and shut down. And I just stand up, man. Yeah, this most is, definitely. Get it. Um, yeah, I uh, I mean, this is emotional and, uh, you know, but I, it, it's, it's also very tactical and practical. Where I just had a meeting with my coaches and we're talking about details of what makes our system so effective. And we're, we're hammering that out with our next group coaching call with our clients and uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon. So we're, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of detail to it, but you just have to carry your state in a way that boom, the, the, the future is getting bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter. And uh, it's worth my effort today. And, and do, you, do you find challenges in, in some business? I think American businesses are a bit more open to what I found. Uh, to, to thinking about the mind state, the British are a bit more reserved. And oh, you talk about mind state, or do we really have to talk about emotions? Uh, so, so how do you break down those barriers if you go into a business and you're talking about state and you're energized and you've got somebody who's not energized? I'm thinking, oh, I don't really want to talk about my mind or my yeah. My well, first of all, um, I'll say the people from UK, which is a whole lot of people, but particularly the Brits which is really a whole lot of people. Um, they're some of the most passionate, emotional people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Now they can do the, you know, the, the quiet stoic look, you know, I mean, I, I remember talking to one guy, I was doing some seminars there in, uh, in England and Swindon and down in Brighton and up in Norway, just all over in London area. And, uh, 
I remember one guy, like he was 10 X in his business and he had more money than he could just retire. And he was in his thirties. And, and I said, well, yeah. So tell me how your business, I understand it's done really well. Well, it's, it's been a, it's, it's been a bit, it's been a bit dis decent, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you, I'm going to throw something at you. What do you mean? <laughs> it's a bit decent. You know, I mean, you like, you like won the lotto, dude. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and I was just, I just met a, a guy who's just a fascinating guy by the name of Andre, who's uh, working with a lot of the biotechnology and he's in there with the Oxford group and just brilliant guy and just works his rear end off. And he's, he kind of like has that same kind of uh, look, you know, the same kind of talk where he's kind of like, um, yeah, I'm probably uh, somebody of average intelligence. <laughs> what does that make me? You know, I'm a lower form of life on the food chain. Though. But I know when I when I talked to him, he had a massive passion towards curing diseases we haven't cured successfully and extending not only the quantity of life but the quality of life and he's in these he's he's neck deep in all these things and it's like a a kid on christmas morning and talking to him he's very passionate so um you know first of first of all just in answering your question here it's it's everybody has a relationship with problems mm. and i like to say think about the biggest challenge that you have right now you know and it may be somebody you're married to <laughs> you know <laughs> maybe hopefully not but um you know it's like you think about you look at that challenge and you have a relationship with that challenge and you think that challenge is bigger than me better than me and so what's the use or hey look i'm gonna keep knocking on this thing it's grown all it's going to grow and I'm growing and I'm going to outsize this thing. I'm going to outwork it. I'm going to out hustle it. And people that have that kind of relationship with problems that says you are to be conquered or I'm going to creatively think around you and you're going to be a stepping stone and not a stumbling block. Those people tend to come up with the better solutions. And when you shut down your brain to say it's impossible your brain will make sure that things line up where you're true to yourself. Yeah. It wants to rid the dissident, the, the cognitive dissidents and create alignment with what your deeply, most deeply committed values are. And so have a relationship with a problem to say, you're my stepping stone. You're my raw materials for my wealth. You're, you're just the thing I was looking for to develop that part of me that desperately needed to be developed. Man, I'm I'm full of joy as I look at you. It's a yeah. whole mindset. It's it's about reframing, isn't it? It's about it's about yeah, you know, reframing it and and yeah, every problem every problem is an opportunity to grow. Really, the way the way I try and look at it doesn't mean you know as <laughs> you said doesn't mean that you're you're always happy, you're always on top of things, but it's about um, actually realizing that actually you've had problems before and you've always managed to overcome them, and this is just yet yeah. another one. Uh, so, and I think if you're in that frame of mind, it means you are generally quite a positive person within um, any kind of framework, which means, as you said, you you can, and that's what I say to my kids, I say, well, are you more likely to be able to solve the problem when you're happy, smiling, or when you're miserable and looking, oh, I can't do anything? So that's how, how are you going to solve it? Yeah, that's so, that's so good. Yep. Yeah. I'm, uh, I would say amen to that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so you know my my my, my listeners and viewers are always obsessed with oh, give, give us some key tips so obviously one of the things we said we're going to talk about is you know what what is it what are the key things give me i don't know five ten whatever how many you got that successful entrepreneurs do in your experience that when you see struggling entrepreneurs they're not doing or they're ignoring it. right well uh first they get real clear on who their target audience is and what need they want to solve. And um, there's a lot of blurriness. And I like to say this, I came, that you'll extend 
your reach by narrowing your focus. Yeah. You stay in reach by narrowing your focus. So I would get real clear on what it is that the need is you want to solve and who has those, who has those needs. And do you, secondly, do you have a clear package that when they look at that package, they get hope to say that will make my problem go away. You got to make that real clear. So clear target market, clear in the needs you solve, clear in the package you provide that's a compelling package. You want to you wanna offer a, a no-brainer offer to get involved with you. It's like, I'd have to be a fool not to at least try that out. You know, have a no-brainer offer, you know. And the first time you, you try this out, it's no cost to you. Just try it the first time. Or uh, the first time, it's only $1 for the first visit. Or, you know, you just ridiculous no-brainer offers. And by doing that, it, it just creates the interaction you have. I, I define wealth. One of the ways I define wealth is increasing the quality and the quantity of your transactions with other people. You know, make, so you do that. And then uh, I would, another huge thing that entrepreneurs that are successful do is they get really focused in their planning. I call it power planning, where they get really clear on what they're working on during this time frame, whether it's today, it's uh, this week, this month, they, they constantly go back to focus. What is the most important use of my time now? What's the highest and best use of my time now? And then they, they, they keep that on track by time blocking those appointments, either with themselves or with key people. They time block that into the calendar. And the biggest challenge an entrepreneurs do is one of the challenges here is they get so busy with things that they don't honor the time blocks that they had with themselves. And so they never get to that project. They never finish that uh, quote or they, they, they don't quite have time to do that, the time they set aside for following up on these leads that they had. And uh, so they're just, they're casually going through life creating casualties <laughs> or, or results far less than what they're capable of producing. I can go on and on with that, but those are, those are some things. Um, tracking your leads, you know, yeah. every time you have a lead, do they go on to the, to the same document or CRM or spreadsheet? And you have a status on each of those leads and you know, when the last time you called or emailed or text those leads and following up on those leads and which of the leads are the hottest leads and which are the leads are time wasters. Yeah. You know, it's on the sales side. I mean, I, I can go through each of the systems, the delivery system, the cash flow system, the estimating system. And, you know, I'm just, you know, there's all kinds of things we can go on that. But is that, is that kind of answer your question? Is that kind of, yeah, yeah, I think it definitely does because it's about. I mean, and, I, and I, we've spoke, I've spoken about this on previous episodes that you know, clarify cl clarity on target audience, you know, and making sure that those that audience has a need for what you have. Um, because I think that so many people just have a scattergun approach; they're just going after everybody because they think that um, you know, the more you go after, then the more you're going to get. Well, only if they're the right people, because otherwise you're just going to get more and more rejection. Right. Um, and then, yeah, um, I, I like the, what you said about, you know, narrowing your focus, which is part, part of that, and that, that, just that extending your reach by narrowing your focus. And then, you know, having that no brainer offer, which, you know, all yeah, you see marketers, all good marketers have an, an offer where you're thinking, well, I'm at least going to try it. And then when you try it, you think, well, if that's what the free stuff or the cheap stuff or the one pound offer like, I need to get some of the stuff that he's, that he's charging or she's charging for. So, so that that resonates and then folk i think that focus planning is one of the key things that i see that people have difficulty with you know people call it time management all sorts of different things but you know people often say to me well how, how have you got so much time to do all these things i said well i haven't i said, i've got that much time there and else but i just do the things that are important and if i haven't got and if there's something else i find somebody who can do that who's better than me right. uh, rather right. than me track because lots of people try to do everything themselves uh, and I thought, well, no, I know what I'm good at. I know what I can really add value to. And I do those things. 
if they're valuable to the business. And then the things that other people can do better than me, I get them to do that rather than me doing well, it. That's agent. really good. Just remembering the four Ds, you know, with everything you come across here, can you delete it? Is it a waste of time? Yeah. Can, you, can you delegate it to somebody else? Can you delay it? Is it going to mess up by, you know, or, or if you do it, do it now. And the one thing that I would recommend that people think about this metaphor uh, to really recommend that they set aside time for their power planning yeah, and just really thinking through who do I need to meet? What do I need to prepare for? Uh, what part of my, uh, what part of my pipeline do I need to invest in to make sure I've got plenty of people in there considering our product along the, the whole pipeline schedule, you know, Power planning is a lot like taking time to sharpen the ax. Yeah. And the actual work is cutting down the tree, but you're going to cut down the tree a lot, a lot faster and a lot more effectively with a lot less effort if you take time to sharpen the ax. And so that's really what power planning is, is you take a look at your day and I like to I like to say in the power planning uh, template that I've created for my clients, we have a set of questions we ask. We ask them every day, you know, and it's uh, you know what issues are need to be addressed in my business today. Uh, where are we at with all the quotes that are out there? Where are we at with the projects that are that are, are we're currently contracted to do? Uh, what are the different parts of my pipeline? How do I need to to, to invest in that and you know who do I need to follow up with today and we empty our emails we empty our text messages and we get everything on either our calendar or on our to-do list and I believe in printing both of those out and just ha have those two sheets of paper you carry around with them all day and that, well I'm going to my computer well you get lost in your computer you get distracted but just write down different notes as you go throughout the day and it just it just it, it just keeps your mind clean and uh, it's a process that just it's like people that do that find themselves a million or two dollars one or two million dollars ahead of where they were 10 years from now if they do it consistently versus not doing it i think yeah and i think that i mean you mentioned that right at the beginning uh about consistency and consistent effort i think that's that's the key because you get lots of people who will do it for a short period of time and it works and then they stop doing it and then oh everything, everything they did after yeah business is about consistency you can't you can't stop doing the things that make you successful and, and expect that success to continue right. it's <laughs> exactly right yeah yeah so so okay so just give us i mean you've, you've been going through some a, a example and you gave some examples early doors um if you got other just a few other examples of tangible measurable results that you've achieved recently with clients because that's yeah, you know, yeah that's we have uh, i mean there's all there's i mean we've got hundreds of let's see uh we have a plumber um that we worked with they were spending about thirty thousand dollars a month and they were producing about a hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue and so within four months, we cut down their ad spend down to $13,000. We just about doubled their lead. And so they've grown from about 100000 to $820,000 a month. They've gone from barely having enough to pay the bills to each of these partners have over a million dollars in the bank. Uh, and it's just been a couple of years ago that we started working with them. Uh, we have another um, remodeler. We work with a lot of contractors that uh, he was making about four or $5,000 a month in profit. Now he consistently makes between 50 and $75,000 a month in profits. We have a chiropractor. We work with healthcare, specialty docs, pain docs, and different uh, doctors. And um, this guy uh, was making $1,200 a month and um, started working with him. And uh, within about a year and a half to two years of really getting aggressive with his saving and optimizing his profits, he had over a half a million dollars in the bank. And he used a good portion of that 
to buy a building and expand on that, expand his operations. And just, I mean, if you name an industry, I probably have coached somebody in it. We've got specific examples of how we've helped them grow. It's, it's just really fun to see results. No, it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, that's, that's the game we're in. And um, as I said before, there's lots of consultants that I've worked with. They don't seem that interested in results. And often they dis disappear before results, <laughs> before you can actually say, hang on, what you told us to do doesn't seem to be working. They've already gone and moved on to somewhere else. Yeah. I'm not sure that's, that's really what you should be doing. You should be there to see it. So if you're confident in your processes, you should well, be. See, that's, that's why we, we want to touch their business at least once a week. Yeah. So we have weekly group coaching calls. We got an individual coach we assign to people. We have an unlimited number of uh, focus, 20 minute focus call, laser focus calls. We've got videos of training. We just, we, we just have so much that if people want to apply themselves to grow their business, they will get results. Um, and uh, if it doesn't work, it, we have to rethink it until it does work, you know? And so not every one of our stories is just perfect experience blast off you know and getting into orbit in three hours after working with us it's hard work but yeah. if we're touching the business and and connecting with the owner at least once a week or, or more you know we just we make sure there's no dust that settles on unresolved issues and we we, we push through things we make sure things get done and you know how many how many projects do you have the, your back burner or sitting on your desk and been staring at you for weeks or months? You know, most people say <laughs> it's about 50 projects, you know? So we just help implement, get those things going. Yeah. And it really makes a difference. And, and, and if, there, if there have been any circumstances where it's not taken off as quickly as you'd hoped or it's not been successfully, what, what would be the, the reasons for that? If, if, if it didn't well, it, almost 100% of the time, if you don't, if you don't work a system, the system won't work. Yeah. So, uh, we have actually, I think we figured it's been 114% of the time. <laughs> it's, it's almost every time there's been that casualness, that lack of owning, um, you know, there's been many clients where I've said, listen, I'm going to fire you before you fire me. I'm more interested in your success than you are. Yeah. I want to challenge you. Uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to triple dog dare you to, to go after it, you know, just to really go after it. And um, so most of the time it's been a lack of, um, focus or effort that the client do they really want to do and we try to weed those folks out um because a lot of times what people want is they really don't want to own a business they just want to have a secure future yeah and so they they may not be willing to take the risks that owners and entrepreneurs you know sometimes sometimes we have to take a leap you know i'm right now i just put an offer in to buy a business you know and uh the business is actually bigger than our coaching business is right now. <laughs> and uh, so as part of our plan is we coach a lot of businesses, but we're also in the process of looking to buy businesses because I want to coach businesses that I own too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot, there's a lot we can do to grow wealth and build our businesses that, uh, but it's really important to get a hold of somebody like you or myself just to talk to an expert that's done it hundreds of times. And uh, like we even give out like, a, I don't know if it's 30 or 50 clients that you have their cell numbers here. You just call anybody, you know, we try to, we have to talk to you and uh, make sure you're not just a competitor wanting to, <laughs> you know, client. I mean, we don't, we have that happen all the time. It doesn't matter, but um you know, we just, we just, Hey, talk to our clients and you let them tell you the good and the bad and the ugly of working with Redmond growth. And, uh, what's most important though, is I believe Hakeem 
and this may be challenging to you. Do you have many folks in the United States that watch you or listen yes, to you? Yes, we do, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so this, they'll, they'll probably get this more. It may, be, it may be a tougher take for these uh, beautiful uh, people of the UK. And that is, that I believe, the number one purpose of your business. This is debatable. It's just my opinion. <laughs> the number one purpose for your business is the business is there to serve you, the owner. Now, you think, well, I'm here to serve my clients. That's my, well, if you don't serve your clients well, the business won't serve you well. Uh, I want to honor God or give to my community. And, you know, you can be very altruistic and very generous with, you know, great nonprofits and people that are hurting. I love that. But, you know, that's, that's the owner. That's their desire. But the business is there to serve you, to allow you. It's to be a vehicle to take you to where you want to go in life. You know, I want to. I wanted this business to be successful enough that I could create a war chest to buy, start buying other businesses. So that's what I'm doing. You know, that's what I like to do. It's like, oh my gosh, you're buying more headaches. I know, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you have headaches, you want to sell me, I'll probably look at seriously looking at buying them. You know, <laughs> um, you know, I don't I don't coach people myself unless I own part of the business. Or I'm buying the business, you know, that's just, I've got a whole bunch of coaches that, that coach, you know, and they follow my systems. But anyway, so um, I hope that's helpful for people here. Just, you want to make sure you're blessed, your business is a place of blessing and you've got it behaving in a way that serves you where you have that family time or you can go on those quality vacations or you can buy that, that perfect thing that you wanted to get for your wife or your spouse or what you know your partner and just you know that's the kind of stuff that you want your business to be able to serve you so, and, and, and i can i want and i have this conversation all the time with people I, I was speaking to a business owner the other day and i was talking to them about their goals they said oh well in whatever time frame i want to be doing a million pounds i said that's great i said but what you need to think about is what it is that you're actually trying to deliver with that million pounds? Yeah, so it's not just yeah. about saying million pounds because it sounds great or five million pounds. What is it that you want to do? I said, because I see too many people, yeah, they get to a million pounds, five million pounds, seven million pounds, but they're not happy because they're working every hour God sends, they're, you know, stressed. I said, so you're now just, you've got more money, but your quality of life has now deteriorated when you had a fraction of the money. So what's the point of that? You know, and if you don't understand that the business is there to serve you, that often happens because it's just you're working all the time and it's almost like, yeah, I've hit the million pounds. Yeah, okay, so how's, it, how's, that, how's that serving you and how's that benefiting you that you've hit the million pounds if you're not spending time with your family, you can't go on holidays because you're always in the business, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's a really uh, important point for people to think about what is it that you're in business for and what is that business doing for you? I think that I, I actually think that is a, a very uh key point for people to reflect yeah. on in their job yeah. growth good yeah well good and then just just what just um one last question uh before yes. we wrap up um yeah. obviously you you showed the book before the power to create so you yeah. might be giving us a, a little in, insight into some of your thinking and your um your systems get, get, just, just tell us a bit more about about that yeah book. this uh the power to create i wrote this uh for uh business owners and pastors now i wrote it for a uh a faith-based crowd so it doesn't matter what your personal beliefs are we can you know this book will be very helpful but i i wrote it based on my finite understanding of what god had in the in god's heart about what wealth and money is and and how we're to live with that so i redefine wealth i redefine money and the role of money i redefine work in such a way that it's really it contains a lot of my my uh coaching uh principles of growing a business um and and so i i put that in there just to be able to disarm people that are against themselves or against 
prospering, you know, because maybe they feel guilty or undeserving. And so we just, we just blow through all that religious, what I say, religious uh, nonsense that we believe that messes us up. And the intention of the book is to free them, free people up to create more and hopefully to be more generous with what they create and the blessings and the results that they are able to achieve. So um, I'm a lot further along, um, you know, uh, I mean, this month I've given, I've given to some nonprofit organizations, you know, three times more than what I was making for my monthly salary, you know, coming out of college and working for PricewaterhouseCoopers and, you know, and so the, the more prosperous I get, the more generous I can be. And, and I love doing that, you know, but whatever your purpose is. So. Excellent. So, so where, where, I'm sure it's in all good bookstores, but where would you, where would one get a copy of that? Um, well, you, I, I think you can go on Amazon and you can get a Kindle version or a printed version, or I, I recorded, uh, I recorded it as well to an audio version of it. So, um, but it's, um, and just, just to let people know, I do have, it's a faith-based perspective on that. Um, cause it answers the question, what did God have in mind when he gave us the power to create wealth? So that's what it really, it answers, but it's, it's not predictably what people think it is. And I've had, I had one businessman that read this and thought he, he said, I thought it was just going to be a prosperity book, but it's more about purpose. And he bought several boxes to give to his friends, but <laughs> really waking up your purpose and uh, where you really feel like you're coming alive as you live your life. So that's the intention. Well, I, th I, th I think everybody could do that. So, you know, if you like what you've heard today, I'll suggest you hook onto Amazon and everywhere else you can find, think you can find it and actually get a copy of the book uh, and then give us feedback to see what you thought about the book and then you might yeah. have, be like that that chap and buy a, 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 several uh, boxes so just wrapping up now because just earlier you talked about the, the gift of that's worth two oh, yeah yes um, yeah for everybody that is a listener of yours if they will give you a five-star review or at least send love your way and they gotta say i love hakeem or <laughs> he's a stud among all men <laughs> or whatever whatever however people want to communicate if they'll if they'll have a connection with you um we will do a growth plan for your business you've got to have a valid business i'd like it to be where you're at least a hundred thousand dollars a year in that now uh, if it is a startup but you're gonna you're gonna get up you know past a hundred thousand pretty quickly our goal is we want to help people 10x their businesses and so um we will provide you a growth plan and give you all the steps, get clear on your three-year goal, and then give you steps on how to get there. You can implement it yourself or you can hire us to implement it for you. But we will do that and we'll waive the $2,500 fee. And so they can just email me directly, tim at redmondgrowth.com, or they can look us up online, Redmond Growth Consulting. Redmond Growth Coaching. We're based in Tulsa, but we serve people really all over, mainly over the United States and Canada, but we've, we've had clients all over the world that we've served. So anyway. So there you go, folks. You know, you can't say fairer than that, even if, and I say this often when people give an offer, even if you've not listened to anything else, I'm sure you've just woken up, um, you know, that's a $2,500 <laughs> gift to get an expert to look at your business and give you a growth plan. And, and, and remember what Tim said, that growth plan, the aim of that growth plan is to 10X your business. So, you know, and one of the, the criteria is try and get up to that 100K. So you're talking about getting to a million pounds um, quite quickly. So, you know, if you can do it yourself, great. And you probably won't be listening to me. And if you need some help and support and some uh, leadership and, and coaching, then Tim is the man to do that for you so i really appreciate it it's been i mean i can't believe an hour's gone already <laughs> i say this every time i do it but it's like yeah. you start and then before you know you finish you think i've, 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 I've got <laughs> yes uh, it's been a lot of fun hakeem i've really enjoyed our time together here yeah so thank you very much and i'm sure you'll be getting inundated with people taking you up on that offer
Well, hey, thanks so much. And I wish you the best in all your endeavors. And uh, may all the people watching this, may they prosper beyond their wildest dreams. That's what is my hope for you. I echo that. I absolutely love it when I do a podcast and hear things that I've never heard before. Actually, to be honest, that's most of the episodes. But anyhow, loved Tim's definition of the growth mindset, loved his maxims, e.g. casualness causes casualties, and definitely loved the four Ds of getting things done. Now, don't forget to check out the show notes at www.thesalesaccelerationforum.com and as always, subscribe, like, and share with your friends or your colleagues. But most of all, keep the feedback coming so that we can ensure that we continue to improve and give you more of what you like. Now, one last thing, if you recall, I promised a $2,500 offer. Now, to claim that, simply contact him with the details which you'll see in the podcast description. Reference that you watch the show, say some nice things about the two of us and the Growth Plan Consultancy is yours. Worth the price of admission, wasn't it? Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Keep listening and keep growing.